Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan. Over the past few days, I had a look at photogrammetry and in today's video, I want to share my progress and my solutions for the problems I faced. By the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get straight into the video. The first problem for me was to find a good software to process my images. I had a look at two free ones, Colmap and Meshroom, and Reality Capture for which you have to pay per input. Meaning for around 60 images at 4K resolution, you'd have to pay maybe 3 or 4 dollars. There is a way to pay less, which I will show you later. Now, Meshroom and Colmap both take a long time to process your images, so I went with Reality Capture. I also got the best results using this software. Now, you can see one scan right here. I haven't done any cleanup and you can see that we only get the model without any ground or whatsoever. So, how do we get to this result? Well, I set up a basic environment for my images. To have your model reconstructed from all sides, you need to have images taken from, of course, all sides. To do this, your background must be one color. This way we can move the object and rotate it around without reality capture noticing that you haven't moved your camera at all. So this is what I did for this dataset. Even though you can see a clear line where wall and ground meet, the software is actually really forgiving and doesn't notice it at all. So, once you have a dataset you're happy with, you can open Reality Capture. You will probably most likely start with a window that looks like this. You can just head over to the top right here and click on one of these options. I like to use this one and reorganize your windows. You can see that we have our 3D viewport right here. This is our 2D image viewer, our console and our 1D viewer which displays our folder structure. Now, you can now just go to input and select all the image files in your dataset. Click on open and you can see that 141 images have been imported. Now a message will pop up up here which will tell you that this dataset will cost us $8 to export. Now this is a bit much, but we can already preview it. So click on align images, which will create a point cloud of our model. You will not have to pay for any of this, you only have to pay once you export your model. Okay, we can already see our point cloud looks really good. We don't have any ground in here and only the object we actually wanted a model of. So now, how do we pay less? Well, there is an awesome tutorial, which I will link in the info card, but here's a quick rundown. We basically want to reconstruct our geometry with images which are downscaled to 25%. This way we have to pay much less. We can still use the full scale images for our texture reconstruction. How do we do that? Well, you can for example use a batch processing add-on for GIMP. This way you can go to File, Batch Image Manipulation, Add all the images, and then click on Add, Resize, select Preserve Aspect Ratio, and give it a width and height of 25%. Click on OK and select an output folder and then click on Apply. This way you will get images which are downscaled to 25% and you can use these in Reality Capture. You will have to put all the downscaled images into a folder which is called underscore geometry and all the high res images into a folder called underscore texture. Now you can again open Reality Capture, select both of the folders and drag and drop them in. You can now see that Reality Capture will tell you that only 141 images will be used and these are all the ones which are used for the mesh reconstruction. And this dataset for example will only cost me 50 cent. Now the whole process is really straightforward. You click on align images and wait for a few minutes. You go, you go over to reconstruction and either select normal or high detail for your model. After that colorize your model and texture it. Now you can go to export, click on model and after you have logged into your account, export the model as either obj, fbx or any other file type. You can already see that I have exported the model as an fbx file right here and the texture file will be in the same folder. Now we can go over to Blender and take a look at our model. Now you can see that my model has imported correctly, but of course at a wrong scale. This is pretty much normal for photo scans. For now we won't worry about that because there's actually another problem with the texture. If we go into the material preview mode, you can see that we still have some shadows around our object. Right now this is not very noticeable, it will be more prominent in other scenes. But still, I want to show you how to fix this. If you have thought about photogrammetry before, you may have already heard about Agisoft. They offer a free program called Agisoft Delighter to delight your models. You can just click on this plus icon, select the model you want to delight, and then use these three brush types to tell the model where shadows are, which are the lit colors and extra colors, which we won't use for this scene. 
So select the brush icon, the shadow color, and colorize some shadows. For example, the shadow right here and the shadows in the back right here. Now let's select the lid color and colorize some areas which are perfectly lit. Now we can press process. Okay, and now our model is perfectly delit and ready to use in an offline or online render. To export the model, you can just expand the chunk right here, chunk one, and right click on processed and select export model. Once you've done this, you can really see the difference between the two textures. You can really see that the shadows are not as prominent anymore. So let's set up our model for the final rendering. We can of course scale it down like this and now we can also use the correct texture. Let's go into the material preview mode and change the texture to the delete one. We don't need the alpha map because this model doesn't have any transparent parts and I will also adjust the clip start so we can take a closer look at our model. You may also want to add a bump texture. For this we want to delete the normal map and add in a bump node. We can then duplicate our texture node, click on this little 2 icon right here, which will allow us to change this to non-color data. And now plug the color output to the height input and the normal to the normal input. Okay, now this is a problem because you can see that the bump texture isn't smooth. We can easily change that by selecting cubic as our interpolation mode. This way we will get a much smoother result. We can also adjust the strength to our liking. And now we have our final 3D model. We don't have to do any cleanup, but we can quickly go into Sculpt node and with the new mesh filters, we can smooth out our model by just clicking and dragging, like this. Of course, there is a slight problem, which is this hole right here. But this doesn't really bother me because, again, this was just a simple test scan and from the distance this looks good nonetheless. Okay, I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope you learned something and if you did, consider liking and subscribing. And we will see us in the next video next Saturday.